Um, as that goes on, thank you everyone for joining me. This is Dr. Paul and this is Bridges Live and, and I'm about ready to go live here on the YouTube and Facebook channel. As you know, my podcast channels and iHeart and, and all you other podcast channels and Apple Podcasts and wherever you get your podcasts at, you can find Dr. Paul I'm Bridges to Live. Live so, here um, on the YouTube I want to and- Facebook let channel, people know, you know that my podcast channels um, and I heart you can and, and all I know other we're podcast some channels here, and so let me Apple fix that. Let me hear podcasts and wherever you get your um, podcasts at. There you go. Um, we have, of course, Bridges Live we like to do three things: information, understanding, action, and that's why we do this show. This is why I've been doing the show for several years now. And all my guests have some information for you, some understanding that you probably didn't know. And hopefully it brings you into an action so we can do, because if we don't do together, it doesn't get done. And I'd like to introduce you to Derek Robinson. Welcome, Derek, to Bridges Live. Thank you, Dr. Paul. It's a pleasure being here. Um, I We want to jump right into this because as your day goes on and on and on, and it's in an evening, um, we want to talk about the sickle cell disease. Some people still don't know what is sickle cell and why is a disease. So let's talk about that first. Yeah, so sickle cell disease is a blood disorder. And essentially what happens is um, red blood cells carry oxygen throughout our body. And red blood cells tend to be donut shaped. Um, and they're smooth and they are able to flow through small vessels in your body and go everywhere carrying the oxygen you need. With sickle cell, what happens is that the red blood cells um, change form and they change into a sickle shape. The name comes from that old agricultural tool, sickle. So it's like a crescent, half moon. And instead of them being smooth, they get rigid and sticky. And what happens is that then it becomes difficult for those cells to travel through the various blood vessels and capillaries in your body. And you end up having a clogging situation. So those cells clog up mm-hmm. and they that causes a lot of pain. But not only that, but red blood cells, healthy red blood cells, um, last, you know, I think it's up to 120 days. Mm-hmm. Um, a sickle cell will only last a matter of a week or less. And so um, you don't have enough red blood cells. So what that means is that you're not getting enough oxygen. Um, and so a lot of patients with sickle cell tend to feel fatigued or um, you're also not getting enough iron. So some of them are anemic. anemic. Mm-hmm. And that's why you hear the term sickle cell anemia. Not all patients are anemic, but but many of them are. And so that that's essentially how it happens. And the history behind it is um, you have it's a genetic disorder, so it's passed down from your parents. Um, and so one parent has a sickle cell trait, and you have two traits. Um, and uh, the the theory behind it is that in West Africa in particular, um, the sickle cell trait was a natural um, response to malaria. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at where a lot of the West Africa, you do a heat map and you compare where malaria is and where sickle cell is, they overlap. And so you had that. And so now as people marry and, and, you know, you have the two form in sickle cell disease. And so that's essentially what it is. You know, um, if most people who don't know and have listened to Bridges live with me and I've talked about this and I've had some shows with Miosha who works with the Red Cross and I actually have mm-hmm. the Red Cross um, emblem back here with me is that I, I, I got malaria because I carry mm-hmm. the sickle cell trait and that was the most horrifying thing that I, because I, they didn't know it was malaria for three months in the hospital Mm-hmm. Um, my spiking, it was just, it was it was so painful, and 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 a lot of the stuff I was going through in that temperature, my brain was in fry mode. 
I would spike past 104 degrees. It was just very, very nasty about what's going on. So um, a lot of the issues that people have with sickle cell, and that's why they need the transfusion. So let's talk about those transfusions. Yeah, so essentially what a transfusion is doing, as the name implies, it's replacing um, the non-sickle cells, they call it the healthy red blood cells. And so what they're trying to do is, it's called an apheresis. So they're taking out your cells, which contain the sickled cells, mm -hmm. and replacing it with healthy red blood cells. And so immediately after a transfusion, um, the patient usually feels really healthy, you know, raring to go. Of course, it doesn't last. And so um, because it's not stopping the production of the sickle cells, it's just replacing it. So as you're, you're, you're not creating any new red blood cells, you're just using the ones that have been transfused into your body. So that's why it's a, a therapy that's used. And it's actually the best treatment and still the only treatment to prevent stroke risk. And so just to back up a little bit, um, one of the complications of sickle cell, especially in young children, is what we call silent stroke. And that's where you can have sickling in the brain. And it's not necessarily the stroke that we all talk about. And you think of an elderly person usually who, you know, will be paralyzed on one side. Um, this is what we call silent stroke. And so you may not even know that the, the patient has had a stroke until there's some a brain scan done and wow. you can see where the stroke took place, especially in very young children. In older children, you could have a stroke. And we, when we talk to teachers, we want them to understand that if you see a sudden change in behavior where you have a student who's an A, B student, all of a sudden they're getting Cs and Ds, something could be going on. But I, I say that because when they do at between ages two and six, and they're doing what's called a transcranial Doppler, which is like a, a brain scan, scan to see how the blood is flowing, mm -hmm. they can identify the patients that are at risk. If they identify a patient who is at risk for stroke, then they have to get regular transfusions. And a lot of times, if you, just like with stroke that we're more accustomed to, if you get a stroke, then you're at higher risk for another stroke. Mm -hmm. And so if you have had a stroke as a child, you may be on lifelong transfusion therapy. Um, and so that's when the, the transfusion therapy becomes really, really important. And it, it's very important for those who are at stroke risk or those who have had a stroke, and also those who are really getting multiple pain crises. And I talked about the, the blood clogging up and being causing pain. And that's the kind of hallmark of sickle cell disease. But the pain, I mean, it's very painful. I mean, these oh, children, yeah, these people are, I mean, it's about the most excruciating pain that you see someone go through. It's absolutely hor hor it's horrifying. Yeah, it is. I mean, if you look at the literature, um, they've done studies and, and it's shown that sickle cell pain is actually more severe than pain from cancer or mm -hmm liver pains. Um, and our son describes it um, when he was much younger. His description was a, as if it was a jackhammer going through his bones. Uh, and, and yeah, it is very, very severe. It, it, it's, not, it's not the pain. We have had patients who have had broken limbs who describe sickle cell pain as more excruciating than a broken bone. Um, so it is, it's, it's tough. You know, one of the things is like, and I'm glad we're doing the show and I, we want to do more shows about sickle cell, you know, and, and blood donations. But this type, I mean, it's, th this is a simple podcast, but there's national information that doesn't get highlighted about sickle cell enough or at all. Which one? Yeah. Both. Yeah. <laughs> I would say both. It's both. It's not enough and it's not and not at all. And so that's that's why um, 
agencies like who I, my wife and I founded the Maryland Sickle Cell Disease Association and, and through podcasts like yours, um, we're a chapter of the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. And we're re- awareness is a big push. You know, it's, we're trying to get the word out just so folks are educated about it. You can find the information. If you go to the CDC, if you go to the NIH, it's there. It's on the websites. You can, but, but getting that word out is something that we're really, really working hard to do. And, and that's why, I mean, when you mentioned, you know, would you be on a podcast? I mean, I jump at opportunities like this. It, it's so no, it, it's so important yeah. to, to just get the word out. But but you're right. It's my wife was on a business trip a few years back, and she was in New Orleans. And the cab driver um, said, "You know what meeting are you going to?" And she said, "A sickle cell disease meeting." And he said, "I thought that was cured. I hadn't heard about it." And she said, "No, it's still very much here." Um, and and that's the type of awareness that, that we're really, really pushing. And, and so, yes, people need to know more about it. You know, I, I, I don't, we, as, as two black men talking in a podcast, live podcast, and sickle cell affects majority, if only the African-American community, it only affects them. Can it affect a white person? It's possible. Yes. Right. Well, actually, you know, and funny, sickle cell in America, right. it's about 80 to 90 percent black. Okay. But it is not the, the, the fastest growing sickle cell population in, in America is, are Latinos. OK, so you have the second most populous yeah. country in the world with sickle cell disease is India. And so one of the things that we always talk about sickle cell disease, but yeah. you have different strains. So you have something that like my son has sickle beta thalassemia and you hear from that word thalassemia you hear a greek sounding name mm-hmm. so you have sickle cell in greece you have sickle cell in italy you have sickle cell in india you have sickle cell in brazil you know? uh, and so yeah and so india is another growing population in america so we have more and more immigration coming from india mm-hmm. uh, into the country and so there's a larger growing population um, in, in, so sickle cell can also affect quote unquote white people. If you come from Southern Italy um, and there are cases where we have a patient who um, the struggles that this lady had for her son to try to convince, and this is in America, that her son had sickle cell disease. They just refused to believe her. Um, And he did have sickle cell disease. And this is a white person. So it is a majority black disease in America, great majority, but it is not solely. Solely. What we like to say is it is not a black disease. It is a (laughs) blood disease. It is a blood disease. Because we we want people to know that it has a cause and effect on our communities and, and the people that are around us then why aren't we all getting involved like we would something else? That seems right. to be the the head scratcher. Like, okay, so why yes. isn't this being pop? I don't want to make everything into like a Hollywood popular, like a popular thing, but people need to know. Yeah, and that and you're right, and that is something that we continue to push. So, um, so for example, you look at the NFL. Um, you know, and so one of the things that we're trying to do is, is there a group, the twins, the McCordy brothers, um, who play uh, in their New England, mm-hmm. one is in New England, one is with the Jets, I think. Um, you know, they're huge spokespersons for sickle cell. But that's the type of stuff that we're, and there are others in the league that we're trying to push that we don't expect to get the exposure of breast cancer. Breast cancer is huge, right? right? I mean, they're, but. Maybe we can get a week, you know. <laughs> maybe we can get one Sunday, you know. We don't. Maybe we don't get the whole, you know. You know, so stuff like because I guarantee you, a bunch of those players um, have sickle cell trait. Yes. Um, and we do have advocates uh, in that community, you know. Um, you know, when when um, I'm just blank Ryan, um, the player from he was with. The Steelers, and he's now a commentator on ESPN. He had a splenectomy in when he went to play in in Denver. Oh. Um, yeah, and and so 
he is somebody who does a lot of work in sickle cell. So we're, we're, we're trying to get that word out, you know, get it into where where people listen to, you know. So you talk about the NBA, you talk about the NFL, um, in Hollywood, you mentioned Hollywood. So that's what we're really trying to to increase awareness about. And, and, and that's going to be important because we have enough, let's call it in, in, in the online world, influencers. We have yes. enough influencers in our community that can really do a lot. Uh, but it, it, it takes work. Um, you know, Steve Harvey is another person who really pushes this a lot because his nephew, nephew Tommy, um, has sickle cell disease. And 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 he talks about it all the time. So we just need to keep doing it and keep. I've actually tried and, to get a hold of him yeah. for the show. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I did because yeah. I, I thought maybe he could be a surprise guest because he would be. But of course, it's Steve Harvey. It's hard for him to get a hold of because there yeah. are people that we do know of, but we don't know about that has sickle cell, yeah. and it is yep. affecting their lives, and it has taken children's lives. It has. Right. It, 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 it. You know and. So what can we as people or people who are listening want to hear? How can it help? Because you did start this association in Maryland about the right. sickle cell. And then people who are li- living in other states, I guess they can go to the, you know, the different hospital or look up sicklecell.org. And, but how can they help? You know, um, I, I would say, first of all, helping themselves i think first so know your trait status mm-hmm. you know one in 10 or one in 12 people of african descent and we have to remember like as you can hear me i'm from jamaica originally we're all black folks but it's not just african american people from haiti from jamaica yeah. from ghana from so people from african descent if you're a black person <laughs> We have some connection to africa right, right? so right. you know so people of african descent it's like one in 12 have the sickle cell trait. And it starts there. So that that's your own self-awareness to know what is my trait status? What is my son's trait status? My daughter's trait status? Um, mm-hmm. Because we think that that helps you make an informed reproductive decision. Right. And we're very careful to say, we have two children with sickle cell. And sometimes people look at us funny and they really want to know, how, how did you have the second one, right? Because we don't believe that that should prevent you from having children. We just think that you need to be informed Formal. about your decision making. So that's step number one. I mean, step number two is yes, learn about the disease. Learn about, you'll be surprised that maybe one of your friends mm-hmm. has it. <laughs> you know, somebody you know might have this. Uh, and there are, you know, if you go to our, our website, MarylandSickleCellDisease.org, um, you can find a lot of information like I said, the, sickle cell, the Centers for Disease Control, we've heard a lot about CDC in this pandemic. Mm-hmm. They do a bunch of stuff, right? It's Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. That's the full name. And so you can go on their website. And then and then I'm not going to shy away from saying donate. Yeah, you know, we, we need we, donations. We, we need blood donations. We need donations. We need blood donations. Mm-hmm. Um, give blood. You don't need an excuse. Um, I always say, I people, oh, I'm afraid of a needle, or I have low blood pressure, or I have high. Let the let the Red Cross decide whether you're a good candidate or not. Turn up for blood drives. Um, register for a blood drive. Just in your local, you know, donation center. Even during COVID, right? I would say, you know, the the. The Red Cross blood centers are probably some of the safest places you can be during COVID. I know. They, I'm, I'm they, a board member yeah, on, uh, the, yeah. the, on the American Red Cross here in Montgomery County, Howard County, Frederick yeah. County. And we're, we're about ready to have a blood drive yeah. here in April at the yeah. St. John's and, and Baptist and Church. Right, and you didn't pay me to say that. Right? No, right, right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, but seriously, um, you don't have to be worried. COVID or post-COVID, go and donate blood, um, and then donate money. You know, um, donate to a cause that includes sickle cell. We provide a lot of patients. You know, one thing in um, the United States, about seventy estimates of seventy to seventy-five percent of persons with sickle cell disease are on Medicaid. Um, it, you know, it's a struggling community in a lot of ways. Because um, very takes so strong, much. vibrant. It, it takes so much. It takes a lot, you know. So, um, but at the same time, 
we have some of the most brilliant people. I mean, in, in our own community, as just talking to a young lady, she's waiting on responses now for medical school. You know, somebody who just finished, um, you know, her social work master's, you know, or my own two sons, one is at Towson, the other one is at Hood College and plays baseball for the college. So, yeah, you know, so we, we're, we're proud of them, but at the same time, there we need services. There are more services that are needed, so, um, donate your time, donate your funds, donate your blood. And I can tell you if that's, you're literally giving life. Every time you donate blood, you are saving a life. Three lives um, to be and exact. There's, yeah, there you go. You know, and, there, and, and you can actually, I should say this, when you go, yes, if you go to a sickle cell sponsored blood drive, you know it's going to help sickle cell. But if you are of African descent, and you donate blood, you can ask them to do the what's called the blue tag program. Mm -hmm. Ask them to tag your blood with a blue tag, and that means it's going to help a sickle cell patient. Um, and that's really important because we don't have enough African American donating, donating we just in don't. The blood for the blood. So we just don't, and we need more because it's been studies have shown there's science behind it that patients who are of African descent, sickle cell patient, majority in America, have less complications when they're getting donors who are of African descent as well. So we need black people to donate. And, um, and it's sad yeah. because we, we're, we're sounding the alarm. We want to sound alarm. Black people just need to donate. And they yeah. are the least donated people giving blood. The least in the United right. States. And that's something we are tired of being on the bottom of. Right. And I think part of it, Dr. Paul, is maybe if people really understand that they're helping their own, okay. it, will, it yeah. will help. Because a lot of times, you know, you see these images on TV um, of a cancer patient. or mm -hmm. something. You don't see us. Right. But maybe if people understood, it's like at, at our church, and we go to the same church, like I said, if we were doing, and when we did that blood drive in the past, and I'd be encouraging folks to go, and they were giving me some excuse, and I said, you know, Car and Mikhail, have sickle, those are my son, you know, they have sickle cell, and they're like, really? I have to come, right? Because they know, know they're helping mm -hmm. somebody they know. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we help ourselves. We have a long history of helping ourselves. I mean, we just have to look at the HBCUs. We just look at what we have gone through in this country to where we are today. We help ourselves. And donating blood is just another way to do that. Do, you think, helping your... do you think we can... Uh, um, why... Maybe you know this question, and since you mentioned the HBCUs, why isn't one of their staples is just regular blood drives on campus? It is, actually. Okay. And they do a lot. Howard University does a tremendous amount. They have, you know, their president has sickle cell disease, you know, and they do a whole lot, as does uh, Morgan State, um, I know Bowie. So they're doing it. They, they really are. It, again, it's it's getting that word out beyond campus, mm -hmm. right? You know, and so um, I know there there's PhD students who do sickle cell, pro, um, uh, they're, they're studying sickle cell disease there and because we get the emails about it. So so Howard is doing, a, 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 they have a great program there for a very long time. Um, and I know at, at Morgan State has done drives. So I think we just have to keep engaging them, but they're, they're doing, a good job there too. Well, I just think you're doing a tremendous job, and I know we need to study more, get more chapters um, up and running throughout Maryland, yep. throughout the country, so people can have what you call that local connection to the chapter, right. to the sickle cell, to the blood, and to get those things started. So, how can people contact you to start a chapter where they're living? So, the best way to do it is just go on our website, Maryland Sickle Cell Disease dot org. There's a link there to send us an email to contact us. I think that that's just the easiest way. We check that every day as we get the emails and we're, we're responsive. Um, so I would just drive you to the website, MarylandSickleCellDisease.org. Um, if you want to make a phone call, it's 410-465-4822. That's 410-465-4822. Two 
222 and leave a message and, and we will definitely talk to you um, about that. There, you know, there, there are a number of small organizations popping up in Prince George's County, um, which is fantastic. The largest number of sickle cell patients are in Prince George's mm -hmm. County, even more than Baltimore City. Um, there's a group in Harford County, um, smaller numbers, but but they're there and, and they're there. doing a lot of great work in Harford County and Cecil, Harford Cecil and the Eastern Shore. Um, we're really trying to improve care access in on the Eastern Shore mm -hmm. uh, because again, a historically black area, right? So, right. Um, right. so, you know, and there are patients out there, we want to make sure that that's improved. So, we, you know, we continue to do the work. So, but MarylandSickleCellDisease.org. Brother, I'm so happy we'll do more. Stay blessed. We, we are in contact Thank because you, of the Paul. things we're doing. But I want people to know they can contact uh, MarylandSickleCellDisease.org. If they have any com any information, if you, if you missed that, you just want to inbox me. I'll direct you to the website. It's going to be on the podcast. Okay. It's going to be on the YouTube channel. But what we want to stress is help. Help yes. the community save a life. There's a lot of pain involved, and there are lives involved. So just help us help them. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. You have a blessed Thank evening. Anything else you want to Thank say, Thank you, sir? Dr. Paul. Yes. Thank you so much. I hope you can have me back at some point. I would love to do it again. Absolutely. So I think we can do this right. more regularly because the more we keep pushing, and then as we get closer to the drive in April, we're going to do that too. So we'll promote that. So we'll have you back mm -hmm. on here at the end of the month or the beginning of April. And I can get you, I, I think we can have a patient on who depends on transfusions. Oh, can that'd be from great. Them directly. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you, Dr. Paul.